I figured I could practice my stabbing today. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked up some stuff for needle felting. This is going to be my first time ever attempting something like this, so it'll be interesting. I thought about painting with wool, but then I settled on making some well-known 3D characters with wool instead. I ended up buying this kit off Amazon. It looked reasonably violent, so I figured why not? That looks fun. That's a really, really cute giraffe. <laughs> It includes this little useless pamphlet with super elementary instructions, basically just teaches you how to make a circle. <laughs> Lucky for me though, I already know how to make a circle since it's pretty self-explanatory, so I won't be needing that. I'm pissing. The kit also includes a couple stabbing devices, which is what I'll be using today. Oh, and these little finger protector things. <laughs> The kit pretty much includes everything you need, so that's nice. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be for though. And it also includes several little balls of felt, pretty much every color except for dark purple. It has this nice light purple though, so that's something. But yeah, I was pretty disappointed about it since I wanted to make my arch nemesis Tinky Winky. <laughs> Oh well, maybe another day. <laughs> I'm starting off pretty simple. This one's the little red ghosty boy, Trevor. Like and comment on this video or I'll make sure your next fart is a real surprise. Who you guys probably know at this point. <laughs> Trevor's the only original character of mine in this video. The rest are other characters that you'll probably recognize though. So first I rolled up a little red ball and poked it until it stuck together and there weren't too many little strands sticking out. <gasps> Ow. I wrapped some more red wool around it and kept poking it with the needle to shape the body. <laughs> Mommy. This is the point where the needle rudely broke into my finger guard. I definitely recommend wearing the finger protectors to avoid bloodshed. If the needle had instead stabbed into my finger, that would have been bad. Very bad. Let me just stab that here. There you go. Quite a few of my needles ended up breaking by the time I got to the end of the video. It was pretty annoying, but also moderately amusing. <laughs> the needles weren't very good quality, but I guess you get what you pay for. Once I had the basic shape down, I poked two little balls of white wool to make the eyeballs and then attached them to the body with more poking. The kit included these little black plastic things for pupils, so I stuck those in as well. And that's it for him. <laughs> I think it's not too bad. <laughs> It's also not very complex, but like I said, starting off simple, nice and easy. So then I moved on to attempting Pickle the Dinosaur. Pickle is one of Mariah Elizabeth's most popular characters. Normally I like to stick to evil characters and Pickle isn't very evil. But I decided to make Mariah's and Nerdy Crafters most popular characters just as an homage of sorts because I recently reached 10k and they played a huge role in that by sharing my channel and videos throughout the year. So yeah, I wanted to thank them and thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have given me. You might be confused at this point because whatever the sub count is right now, it's a lot more than 10k. I confess, I made this video a little bit in advance before consulting my fortune teller. Huge thank you to Mariah for helping me out again. I can't even express how grateful I am. Thank you so much. Instead of making several little shapes and then attaching them together, I just kind of made a general dinosaur shape instead with a big piece of fluff. I thought this needle felting stuff was gonna be really difficult, but surprisingly it turned out to be one of the easier things I've done. Even easier than paper squishies or filling out the Create This Book 2 pages. That being said, this is my first time doing this, so I didn't really have very high expectations of myself. I just kind of went in and stabbed everything, let my self-conscious, I mean subconscious, take over. I felt like I was in my element, it was pretty relaxing, actually. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah. I paid close attention to poke around the nose and tail to shape it out as best as I possibly could. Then I cut a small piece of dark green wool out for pickle spikes and poked it into shape. Once I was happy with the way that was looking, I stabbed it into pickle's back. I'm sure some sparkle butt will get mad at me for stabbing pickle, but I assure you the pain was necessary. Of course I would never intentionally hurt Pickle. I cut two pieces of light green and started poking them into long cylinders and then I cut those in half. These are gonna be all his little dinosaur limbs. After that I shoved the eye things into the head which was actually pretty hard to do. So that ended up being a little bit of an issue. I had to use the bigger needle and brute force to make it work. Pickle was looking a little hairy. There were a couple little excess hairs sticking out all over the place so I tried to trim them up as best as I could. The kit included shears. These little clipper things that are really good for cleaning up all the little hairs that are hanging off and making it look a lot neater. And then I decided to cheat. Uh -oh. Um, yeah. Because that's what the dark side does. Rawr. I pulled out my tried and true Pasta pants. 
and did some of the small little details like the toenails and nostrils. I'm just not patient enough, so I took a shortcut. I hope you don't mind. Quick side note. If you're new here and you've never smelled a dinosaur fart, you should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to ring that bell icon thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. So next up is Nerdy Crafter's Salt Shaker. This one's based off her Salt Shaker plushie. I started off by making the white body, which I used my fingers to shape as I was poking. The more you poke it, the less the hairs stick out, so it's really important to poke it a whole bunch. In fact, this whole stabbing process goes a lot faster if you have one of those double or triple needle tool things. I only have a single needle one, so I guess this whole process is gonna be delightfully slow and tiresome. Yay. I liked making this one in particular because there weren't any appendages hanging off. I added a gray cap thing to the top. I think it's like part of the lid the bottom of it where you screw the lid on, and then I poked a big ball of dark green for the cap and added that to the top. I ended up having to use the thick needle thing to stick the eyes in again, just because these black button things were still making my life difficult. Even after I punctured a hole in for them, they were still giving me a bit of a hard time. After that, I pulled out my Posca pens again for the eyebrows, mouth, and blush. Oh, and I also drew the little salt shaker holes with Posca pens, so there's that. Once I was done with those three, I decided to make a few more characters. These two are a bit more evil. <laughs> hey, uh, would you like to go to the movie sometime? Spring shall come, come again. At this point, I was getting a bit too confident in myself, so I decided to try making Gur from Invader Zim. One of you guys, Dragons, is a huge fan of Invader Zim, like me, so this one's for her. I took some green felt and started stabbing the body into shape. Kind of succeeding, but also kind of not. This one was probably the most difficult of the bunch. In general, each one so far took about 20 minutes to make, except for Gur. This one took forever. I do feel like these would have been a little easier if there was more wool to work with. Because of the limited amount of wool, these ended up being pretty tiny, and having to make such tiny miniature things is obviously harder to do. Not really an ideal situation, at least for me. The thing is, this kit gives you a ton of wool, but they don't really give you much of each color, so you can only make very tiny characters for the most part. Anyways, I poked a long piece of black into like a snake, and cut it to make all of Gur's little appendages, and then attach those into the body. Another thing about this kit was that the foam block was starting to wear down quite a bit at this point, making it harder to poke each character and get the felt to stick to each other. I don't know what to do about that. It may seem like everything's going wrong, but I'm used to it. I then added a small piece of pink for his tongue and a small piece of gray for the zipper. I poked two white balls and stuck them onto his face for the eyes. One of them is a bit bigger than the other. Yes, well, that'll sort itself out, I'm sure. Just try not to lose any sleep over it. I proceeded to use a Posca to draw on the stitches and the nose, and then I jammed in the pupils into his face. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm not too concerned with perfection. As long as you can recognize who it's supposed to be, I'm happy. That's good enough for me. And since I was already challenging myself, I decided to go ahead and needle felt a minion. I guess minions aren't necessarily evil themselves, but they're always ready to help someone who is evil, eager to be a part of that evil. Kind of like a henchman of the dark side. So I'd say they count. This one also took a little bit longer than the others, though I didn't struggle quite as much as I did with Gur. I started off by poking a big yellow oval. Minions basically look like yellow Tic Tacs, so that's the shape I was aiming for. Then I took a ball of blue and stuck it to the bottom. This is supposed to be the bottom part of the overalls. I poked a black strap around the head and made a gray circle on his face for his goggles. On top of that gray circle, you can see I added a ball of white fluff for his eye. I also stabbed together a long tube of yellow and chopped it up with a pair of scissors into little pieces for his little minion arms. I did the same thing for his legs, but this time with blue. This black piece is going to be cut up into his gloves and boots, critical accessories of course. These bits were so tiny and I had to attach them onto his flimsy little noodle arms, which was nearly impossible, so I resorted to using some hot glue for that. I punched in the black pupils and added some sparse black hair on his head so he's not completely bald, only a little bald. And for my finishing touches, I brought out my Posca pens again and painted on a smile, some pockets, and buttons on the overalls. <sighs> This one's honestly a hot mess, but I think there's no denying that it's supposed to be a minion, so that's a win. Overall, I'd say it's not bad for a first try. Gur and the minion are slightly more disheveled than the others, but that's mostly because the foam board deteriorated. So, not entirely my fault. <laughs> Help! Help! I've been stabbed! 
crap. <laughs> Click on the bottom right or top left to save me.